Hi Grade Fives and welcome to your Natural Science lesson today. I hope you are all well and I hope you have managed to remember some of the information that we learnt in our last lesson about the structure of our Earth because today we are going to look a little bit more in detail at the structure of the Earth's crust and the tectonic plates that make it up. So I hope you're ready and raring to go. Before we do that, let's just quickly make sure that we have ref refreshed our memory and that you can tell me how many layers make up our planet, what our structure of our Earth looks like if you were to dive deep, deep, deep down inside the Earth. Have a little think if you need to, but most of you, if you were paying attention in our last lesson, should be able to tell me that there are actually five layers to our earth and if we started at the very very center you would find the earth's core and that core is a solid um, ball of metal of nickel and iron outside of that surrounding that you have the earth's outer core that's right now this is still nickel and iron but remember this one is liquid but extremely extremely hot coming off of there you have the thickest layer of all, the mantle, and scientists actually divide that into the lower mantle, and then coming closer to the surface, the upper mantle. And then sitting on top of the mantle, the last layer of them all, is the Earth's crust. So well done if you remembered all of those five layers. We are now, as I said a minute ago, going to have a little look at the tectonic plates that make up our Earth's crusts. So what is the aim of our lesson and the vocabulary we will need? Well, the aim is to understand how the continents of the world have changed over time and to know about the Earth's surface being made up of different tectonic plates. The vocabulary we are going to use and hopefully you can include into that very comprehensive science dictionary is tectonic plates, crust, mantle, continents, Pangaea, very funny word, but you'll learn about it soon, and continental drift. So let's do a little bit of combining our natural science knowledge with social science. Hopefully you will have remembered from your work at school and in previously in grade four, the names of our continents. There are seven continents that make up our planet and here you, are see, you will see I have them in different colours. So there's this one in red, purple, yellow, hopefully you all know the yellow one because it is our continent, green, blue, orange, and then at the very bottom we have the white one. So pause your video now and see if you can remember the names of each of those continents. Okay, there they are. So the red at the top here is North America and directly underneath we have South America. Across in the yellow, I hope you all got that right, is Africa and there we are down there at the bottom is South Africa, the country. Remember, don't get your continents and your countries mixed up. A continent often is, many, is made up of many different countries. Europe here in the top in green, then next to it we have Asia and below Australasia. Now Australia, remember, is this big landmass here, but Austra Australasia is also made up of islands such as New Zealand and some of the Malaysias. And then at the very bottom we have Antarctica. Okay, what is this line in the middle? Well, it is the equator. Remember, our Earth is divided into two hemis hemispheres, the northern and the southern hemisphere. So Europe, Asia, a lot of Africa and North America are part of the northern hemisphere and anything below the equator that includes us in South, in South Africa are part of the southern hemisphere. And also just for your ge geographical knowledge, I've also put in there the names of your oceans. We have the Pacific Ocean, which wraps around all the way from the Americas right the way across over here to Asia. The Indian Ocean below India. 
the Atlantic Ocean that separates the Americas from Europe and Africa. And then we have the Southern Ocean at the bottom here, surrounding Antarctica. And at the very top, we have the Arctic Ocean, sometimes called the North Sea or the Northern Ocean. So well done if you got all that right. I'm sure your geography teachers would be very pleased to know that. But how does that relate to our tectonic plates? Well, let's have a little look. Now, as I've already said, in our last lesson, we learned that the Earth's surface, the very top layer, is called the Earth's crust. And as we now know that the Earth's crust is made up of different rocky plates. Now, I don't think plates like dinner plates. That's not right at all. But here, the picture next to it should give you an idea. This map shows you where the plates are. Where you see a red line is a boundary of a plate. The plates sit on top of the upper mantle and the mantle is, being, is constantly moving because of the heat generated from the Earth's core. Okay, so both the outer and the inner core generate a lot of heat that comes up and rises and moves the mantle, which in turn moves the plates that are sitting on top of it. So if you have a little look here, many of the plates have got names that match the continents that they are on or the oceans that are on top of them. So here you'll see we have the North American plate, but the, that has on top of it both North America and some of the Atlantic Ocean. Here we have the South American plate that has South America and again much of the Atlantic Ocean. We have the African plate, we have the Eurasian plate, so Europe and Asia become Eurasian and so on and so forth. Now you can pause your video if you'd like to look in detail at each of those plates. You don't need to know them, their names off by heart. But what you do need to know is that on top of those plates sit our oceans and our continents. Now, if I bring you back to our, our picture here of the continents and oceans, I'd like you to have a very close look at South America and Africa for me. Now, if you look very carefully and you almost squint your eyes so that the edges blur, you might be able to realize that at one point, South America actually fitted within Africa, right next to Africa, almost like a jigsaw puzzle. Can you see that? Well, that jigsaw puzzle, the idea that the continents were once more closer together and have been drifting apart, that concept was come up with by this gentleman here. In 1910, so that's 110 years ago, this gentleman, a German scientist by the name of Alfred Wegener, he was studying the idea that the continents might have once been one single landmass. However, it wasn't actually until 20 years after he died that geologists, now geologists are scientists that study our earth and in particular rocks, they realized he was right. The continents and the ocean floor really do float on the moving rock plates, on the, on the Earth's crust, the uh, tectonic plates, and they have been drifting for millions of years. It's quite an amazing fact, isn't it? But how did Alfred Wegener come up with the idea for continental drift? Well, have a little look at this picture here while I read you some information. So, he came up and realized that there were actually some very, very convincing pieces of evidence to support the idea that the Earth was once one huge continent. He looked at where different fossils were found and was able to piece the continents back together into one huge jigsaw landmass. Okay, and as I said, if you looked closely at South America and Africa, there you go, you could see that they roughly could have fitted and Antarctica into where India and the curve of Australia. 
And not only did he certainly figured out that jigsaw, but he also, as I said earlier, looked at fossils and he found fossilized remains of creatures in both South America and Africa that would never have had the ability to cross the Atlantic Ocean. So he found things that were land reptiles that couldn't have ever swum across an ocean or freshwater reptiles that would never have been able to survive in the sea. And he found them both in Africa and South America, proving that at one point for those animals to be fossils, sorry, of those animals to be found in both continents, at one point those continents had to have been close together or touching. And this pattern repeated itself. He also, if you watch and you can see this purple line here, you'll see that this shows another land reptile fossilized remains that were found in Africa, India and Antarctica. And a fern, a type of plant, this yellow line, I'm not, I hope you can see it clearly on your computers, but this yellow line, that fern, that one type of plant was found across all of the five continents you can see currently, South America, Africa, India, Antarctica, and Australia. And even if we know, as we do, that seed dispersal does allow plant seeds to travel on the wind great distances, I don't think they would have been able to survive a trip across the ocean to Antarctica as it currently stands today. So I think it was a pretty convincing um, argument at um, 110 years ago that Alfred Wegener was um, making. And as we said, after his death, geologists decided that they would study it further and they realized that he was more than likely right. So let's have a little look at an idea. This, this, is, this is an idea that scientists have come up with, an educated idea um, of how our Earth used to look. So around 250 million years ago, they believe, as did Wegener, that the Earth was one large landmass and they called it Pangaea. Okay, so there might have been little, little, little gaps between, but it was one large supercontinent. From there, the tectonic plates were moving and they started to pull the continents apart and Pangaea started to split. So around 200 million years ago, in the Triassic period, we now have two land masses. Now the top one here, now I'm going to try my best to pronounce these, I would say that that is Larissa, but down here, you're, hopefully you may be even able to pronounce this better than I, uh, Gondwana land, I'm going to guess. I don't know why they're called that, maybe you could do a little bit of extra research and find that out. Okay, and then about 145 million years ago, we now have something that is starting to resemble our continents. I can roughly see Africa here. I don't know about you, you have to kind of, again, squint your eyes and South America here, and this would be Eurasia or Europe and Asia. Okay, this is the Jurassic period. So if anyone ever has ever wa watched the Jurassic Park movies with the dinosaurs, this is that period there. Now we're getting to about 65 million years ago, and now you can see even better, even clearer. So here I can see that this is obviously about to form, I think, Antarctica, and up here, North America. And this is all because of those tectonic plates drifting in different directions. And now we reach our present day, and now we actually have uh, uh, continents and the land masses that we will recognize today. So here's the key question on all of your lips, I'm sure, is, but are the tectonic plates still moving? Well, the answer is yes, they do. They move between one to 10 centimeters every single year. So the continents are still drifting. They're actually still moving in different directions. Some, are, some plates move together, some plates pull apart, and some plates rub up against each other. But we can look at that in another lesson, perhaps. But 
the plates, as sorry, as I said, they move together or they rub past each other, and those cause things like earthquakes, volcanoes, and where they're pushing against each other, often we get mountain ranges as well. Now, I thought that this was all quite abstract, so it would, uh, I thought I'd include these couple of pictures here to show you actual photographs of two tectonic plates. Here, this photograph is taken in Iceland, obviously underwater. You can see someone scuba diving here. And what you have here are two continental plates. You've got them here. Um, now, I believe that the Icelandic ones are pulling apart. I may be incorrect, so you might need to fact check me there. But there they are. And this is where new land is created, but there's a plate boundary. And this one is a very famous one. It's called the San Andreas Fault Line, and it runs down America. And you can see again here, two plates that are meeting, okay? This I believe is the North American and the Pacific plate. And the San Andreas Fault Line is often very famous for um, earthquakes and geologists and seismologists study earthquakes there and they to see how the plate boundaries are moving and how that creates earthquakes. So here's something I want you to try and do, which is a little bit hard, I know, but I want you to imagine that you have a machine that could take you 50 million years into the future. What do you think our continents would look like then? Our global map would be very different because, as I said, those plates are still moving. Well, South America is actually moving up towards North America. North America is moving away from Europe and Austral Australasia is moving towards Asia. So the map will look very different 50 million years from now. And eventually one day scientists believe that all the continents will come back together again to form another super landmass like Pangaea. So well done guys, now you know a little bit more about the plate tectonics and how they are moving. And as I said, when you get into grade seven, you will look at things such as natural disasters in your science lesson, and you will realize then how the plates can cause certain natural disasters. Right, that's it for today's lesson. So in our last lesson, we looked at the structure of the earth right from its core all the way up to its crust. Today, we had a look at the plate tectonics or the tectonic plates, sorry, and how those move and make our continents and oceans move. And then we are going to look and build on that further next lesson when we start to look at the different types of rocks that we have in our world. So we are going to become geologists. Okay, have a lovely day further, guys, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.